Well, John, it's now are three of those newly elected MPs now from the constituency of Plymouth Moorview. The Conservative MP Johnny Mercer, Labour's Stephen Kinnock is the member for Aberavon. And uh, from Scotland, the SNP's Kirsty Blackman, who is the member for Aberdeen North. Welcome to you all. Uh, so how was it, first day in the Palace of Westminster? It was, it was odd. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you see it on TV, but you don't actually expect it to be like it is. It was really busy. The, apparently it was designed so it looked busy, um, but trying to fit 650 people in that really small space is, um, is quite difficult. So. I mean, you're not only having to fight for offices, you're actually having to fight for pew space within the chamber. And well, so, where, where have you ended? We, we were sitting along in the chamber and somebody else was like, right, I'm just going to come in that, that row as well. And then somebody else was like, I'm going to come in that row as well. And we're like sardines by the end of it. But it was, it was a, definitely an interesting experience. I mean, Johnny, you felt a very individual campaign, saying that you were going to make your voice heard, not necessarily be dictated to by the party. Was it what you expected when you finally got to Westminster? Um, I mean, look, there's no two ways about it. It is quite daunting going into the House of Parliament for the first time. But, I mean, what an opportunity and what a privilege. And that's what really dawns on you when you walk through those doors and you sit in a packed House of Commons on the green benches. Really, it is, it is humbling, but what an opportunity to really change things that you're passionate about. Is it a surprise for you? I mean, you've got a father who's been a party leader, a wife who's a prime minister, so uh, yeah. does it feel like business as usual, where you should be? Well, the funny thing is that everybody keeps looking at me and saying, oh, you must know this place like the back of your hand. And in fact, I get lost six times well, a day. Yeah, knows haven't got a clue, well, yeah. don't have a telephone, trying to get the email set up. So very much in the same boat as everybody else. Do you think in a sense that's rubbish, actually, that now you're MPs, that, 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 should it be as confusing and as difficult, or is that uh, us putting sort of tradition ahead of what a modern politician really ought to have at their fingertips. I think it's difficult for the whips because the, by definition you don't know who's coming back into Parliament. So it's very difficult to do continuity planning when you're running a business that actually you don't know what's coming next. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's a strange mixture, the House, of um, ancient history and modernity and you do sometimes see those two things clashing but you know there's some great traditions there and and I, I think it's fun but I thought that sort of zombie walk of the speaker today was just completely <laughs> bizarre and I wasn't waiting for that at all. Yeah, it's incredibly strange not just being new but also being part of this party which suddenly has this unprecedented presence. I know, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, last week we were um, down and kind of trying to work out what was going on and getting our computers and things like that. Um, and we were just walking around with big grins on our faces the whole time. Um, we've, we've calmed down a bit, we've settled down a bit now, and we're just trying to you know, work really hard and get into the swing of things. As has been said, there's a huge amount to learn in a really short space of time. Um, and it was, I thought Harriet Harman's um, speech was really good when she was saying that you're all MPs. Um, and we're all uh, at the same level. Um, and I thought that was really, really good to listen to. I mean, to. some are more equal than others uh, in the sense that you are a Conservative MP. So the government's going to be defeated most of the time. It's going to be if you rebel. Are, are you uh, inclined to rebel? Uh, no, I'm not inclined to rebel. I think that, um, you know, we, as Conservative MPs, we are elected on a Conservative manifesto. And it's our job to see that through. Um, but, uh, you know, our duty, or certainly my duty, is, is firstly to my constituents. No, I, mean, um, I was reading your manifesto yeah. and the issues you want to stand up on. I yeah. mean, personally or, yeah, or as yeah. a party? You, personally. You're yeah. Like, well, I can't see, you know, to my mind, a lot of them aren't out of sync with what the party wants to achieve. The reality is the Conservative Party has delivered a lot of investment into Plymouth that we haven't seen for a long time. And, uh, you know, the, I can't foresee there being issues where the two are going to separate at the moment. On the other hand, Stephen Kinnock, you're part of a party that's facing this enormous fight back now. I mean, how do you see yourself as part of that? Well, very excited. My personal view is that the Tories are going to spend the next years tearing themselves to pieces over Europe. I think that the SNP, the... You the can ex tear yourself to pieces over the leadership. <laughs> 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 the expectations on the, uh, of, of what the SNP can realistically deliver are way beyond what's realistic. So I, I, I actually look forward to now holding this government to account and fighting our corner in, in Westminster. But you do have to make this choice right away on a new leader and obviously sure. MPs are important because they're, they're nominating like that so mm. I mean do you know all the people involved? Do you feel you can sort of decide, will you decide to back one or another? Yeah, I will, and when I'm ready, I'll certainly be happy to make that view public. Um, at the moment, I'm talking to the candidates and getting a sense of what we need. And, you know, it's clear, I, I'm clear in my mind what we need, what kind of message well, we're we need to put across. Dan Jarvis Questions. is going to back Andy Burnham. Oh, right, okay. Well, uh, you know, Andy's actually putting a very good sort of eclectic team together, which, you know, good for him. He's not been announced yet, I hope so. That's just <laughs> oh, right. You heard it here first. And being part of that 50-plus team at the SNP, what do you see your role? 
What do I see my role? Um, I, I've been a councillor for a few years, so I've probably got more experience of politics than some of the other people in the group. Um, I think that I've been able to hit the ground running with things like casework, um, and I'm quite Are happy to... Are you going to be here sort of every day Parliament sitting, do you think? Every day Parliament sitting, absolutely, yeah. Um, that's, that's the plan. We're going to be you know, full participatory members of the, of the House of Commons. We're elected as MPs. We're not um, any lesser MPs just because we represent Scotland. <laughs> Oh, uh, you'll be the first Scottish MP to be here every day, Parliament City, I think. But anyway, thank you all very much indeed.